like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp. And welcome back to the Harrisburg Shrimp Tank post-show wrap-up. I'm your co-host, Joy Snyder, along my, alongside my esteemed co-host, Thank Taylor you. Ranker. Always that's, looking oh, very that's sharp. That's Taylor Big Lobster <laughs> Ranker to you, Joy. I'm sorry. Joy Big the lobster. Svelte Shrimp <laughs> Snyder. Don't forget that if you missed any of the podcasts, you can uh, catch a full replay at shrimptankpodcast.com slash Harrisburg. You can also subscribe to our channel on iTunes, the iHeartRadio app, and anywhere else where podcasts are found. So we had a great time interviewing Michael Hartle today. Thank you so much, Michael, for being on the show. Thank you. And I think before I ask my question, Taylor just has a question that he's super anxious to ask oh, you. Oh, yeah. It's been, uh, you know, it's, it's been bugging me all day. It's important. So allegedly, there's a rumor floating around that your favorite alcoholic beverage is a Long Island iced tea. Is that true? That would be correct. Well, yes. if that's true, then we have to take just a moment here, and we have to welcome <laughs> our lovely, lovely shrimp tender, Oh, thank you very much. (laughs) That is the most beautiful shrimp in the land, is it not? Thank you, shrimp tender. So, so now that we've addressed that deep and abiding question, thank you. (laughs) Feel free, by the way. It's all yours. Thank you. (laughs) But Michael, one of the things we really touched on in the podcast was how you are different from your competition, or or maybe the people doing something similar, like uh, Net Next Jet, and and so can you tell us or Wheels Up, Wheels Up, that's another one. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell us what it is that your company does that's different from companies like that? Sure. Well, those companies are operating as a commercial operator, where we are a private uh, operator. We use private aircraft, and uh, we we're dedicated to the customer's needs. So we're we're right. We're, we're everything we're doing is specifically for our clients. So you're going right from it's not. There's no middleman service. You're no. you're interacting directly with your clients. Correct. So yeah. that's truly a white glove customized experience. Yes. Yep. Which we can speak yep. to, I think, from our experience. Oh, yeah, you. yeah. We haven't, haven't utilized uh, Michael Services. We can testify to that. So I think it's important that we address what I consider to be the stigma. There's, I think there's a stigma about flying private. Can we talk about that a little bit? Because I don't necessarily, I think that needs busted a bit. Sure. Uh, if you look at that, uh, yes, it's, it's expensive uh, to do that. But if you look at the cost that, uh, let's say you take four or five people on the airlines, uh, and you look at the cost of that versus the cost of our operation, it's very little difference. Do you, can you uh, estimate, like, the time savings? The time savings is significant. I mean, we're looking on average saving pe- people 80% of wow. their travel time. Uh, so if you count going to the airport and waiting and having to go to a connecting flight somewhere else, uh, we're right there. You pull into the hangar. You get on the airplane right away, yep. and we're off in a couple minutes, and we'll have a rental car or an Uber, whatever, waiting for you to arrive. You can go right to your destination. And I'd like to sh- you know, share a story with our listeners and our viewers because this has happened to me personally. About three, four years ago, uh, the CFO of the company that I own and myself as CEO, we were on a business trip to Los Angeles, an educational conference, um, three days. So we were only prepared for three days of what we thought was LA weather in January, which joy seemed like the thing at the time. <laughs> I right? know. I was like, sign me up. <laughs> Except on day two of the conference, our astute team back here realized that there was a blizzard coming through central PA and we needed to get home earlier. We weren't going to get home. Well, we learned quickly that the commercial airlines didn't care so much about us. <laughs> they didn't <laughs> adjust their 747 <laughs> flight for Taylor's CEO problem. So, uh, we were able to get out a little bit early, but essentially we got stuck in Chicago. Care to guess how long the CFO and CEO were stuck in Chicago? Four miserable, stewing, rotten days in a time. Wow. We were lucky to get a hotel room because it was on, you know, right. very. So I've had the experience, and that was really personally when the idea of Let's Go Air first came into my awareness. And now recently, so I really, Michael, where the heck, where the hell were you then? I didn't know you, <laughs> right? So recently, however, we've had the polar opposite experience. We had a business trip where we needed to get five of our team, professional team, down to Atlanta. But it really was only for about a one day worth of business. So we were actually able to utilize uh, Let's Go Air. And Joy, could you talk about that? Because this is the polar opposite yes. experience of my Chicago debacle. Definitely. And really, I would say the polar opposite of any uh, 
public air travel in general. It's not just when dreadful things happen. It really was just so much more convenient than any flight I've ever taken. I mean, we pulled up to the hangar, parked our, our cars there, and within 15 minutes, we were boarded the plane, taking off. And when we landed in Atlanta, you had uh, Uber, I mean, uh, our rental car all re- ready for us. And it just saved um, so much time. And it's it's hard to quantify exactly the value of that. Actually, I did that. As the business owner, I actually quantified that. So I calculated, well, this is part of the cost-benefit analysis, right? So I calculated we would have had to have five of us on, you know, business class, right? And it would have taken an entire day with the layovers and the, you know, the security and whatnot, an entire day. So you would have had five people out of the flow, not not serving clients, not working on the business. So when we did the cost-benefit analysis, it saved five people an entire day, which amounts to five full days. Think about that. So how do you quantify that. It's actually easy. So, so it, other business owners, I would encourage you to do the same math. <laughs> it really is something that becomes practical at a certain point, which I think is not what we tend to think of when we think of private air, but yep. it saved us time, money, and a lot of resources. And one more thing I wanted to get into, Michael, before we finish up was really uh, one of the things we heard a common theme in the podcast was how you care for your clients. We touched on that a little bit, but could you tell us a little bit more about that, how you go the extra mile to really meet your clients' needs? Sure. So being the private private aviation, we're, we're looking specifically at our customers' needs. What do they need? What type of aircraft do they need? Um, what type of services do they need when they get there? It, the destination is their, is their key piece in their travel. We want to make that travel to that destination uh, a great experience. So what, one last question here that I'm just curious. How much larger do you think the market for your type of service is in central PA than the perceived market? I think it's much larger. Uh, I think there's, there's a lot of potential there. I think once people understand that the cost of this is n- – is very comparable to the airlines when you start adding people to the airplane. Uh, the airplane costs a certain amount uh, per hour to fly, so the more people we put on, the more efficient it gets. You know, Joy, we talked about this on the podcast, and I think this is worth wrapping up a little bit, mm-hmm. but what is the largest cost? I was sort of shocked by this, that the largest percentage of the total cost is, was it energy? Uh, it's it's fuel. fuel, yeah, okay. the fuel. Right, mm-hmm. and which I was, is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised to find, what do you, What was the estimate of that, the total percentage it, which of the flight? It, a lot of times it's, it's usually around 40%, and sometimes as high as 60%, so that's, depending ouch. on where we go. Yeah. Ouch, right. Yes. And one of the other, the last question that I have for you here, but um, the professionals, the pilots mm-hmm. and the professionals who are serving you, what percentage mm-hmm. of that total cost is attributable to them? They're just uh, about 10 to 15%. And I think that's another myth that's out yeah. there that people probably assume the pilots really are a big part of the cost or not. Oh, no, absolutely the risk, not. The, yeah. the insurance, the other issues. It's It's the maintenance of the aircraft and making sure that it's a safe aircraft. That's the and By the way, thank you for that. Yes, <laughs> we, we value we, that. We appreciate that. <laughs> there's a lot behind the scenes there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, again, there's a lot more that we covered on the podcast. You're definitely going to want to check out our website at the shrimptankpodcast.com slash Harrisburg to catch the full replay of the episode with Michael. Michael, thank you so much for being on the show and for Thank those you. that are interested in getting in touch with you or learning more about your company, what's the best mm-hmm. way for them to do that? They can go to our website at letsgoair1.com or they can call us anytime at 717-525-7420. We strongly, strongly encourage all of you folks in Central PA, business owners, entrepreneurs, at least give Let's Go Air a call and give them a shot. Definitely. Let's go air one dot com. And next week on our show, we are going to have the privilege <laughs> of interviewing John Sansonito, which I think Taylor can speak a lot to him. John Sansonito is the owner and uh, principal manager at uh, INA Services. They're a security firm and a private investigations firm. So, boy, do we have some great questions <laughs> for John. We're going to get into a lot of interesting stuff. Particularly the plea, the stuff. fifth section. I'm, I'm anxious about that. But again, catch a full replay of our show at shrimptankpodcast.com or check us out at iheartradio.com. Thank you again, and we'll see you next week. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in a shrimp tank.